Disco Fleet. I am your host, Daryl, and I'm joined as always by that sharp looking guy over there, Jeremy Power. How are you doing? Doing great, Daryl. I'm excited. A big A tier tournament, and we're going to be at this one. Exactly. This is one of the first ones that we actually get to be at. You were lucky enough to be at TCO last year. Yes. Didn't get a chance to go this year. All the A tiers that we've covered, this is finally the first one that we actually get to go go and see and get to go and meet the players go and meet some people that have been on the show yeah i'm excited and, and one of the more memorable ones like one of the biggest tournaments in alberta and the only thing i think that could be bigger than the tournament is the guest we've got this week for the picks as well absolutely yeah he's been described as the nicest man in disc golf jeremy always likes to say that alex penny how are you doing i'm doing well gentlemen thank you for having me on Awesome. Yeah, we're excited to have you. Thank you for joining. And we so, think maybe, Alex, you might have a little advantage tonight because um, you've been to this event a number of times. You probably know a lot of the players in the event. You hail from Calgary, so you're just a stone's throw away from where we're going to be. Are you feeling good? I'm feeling very good. Um, the other thing is I'm actually part of the tournament planning committee for Falcons Flight. So <laughs> we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure this event is as memorable as you gentlemen described. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. We're excited to, uh, yeah, excited to make my picks, Jeremy. I'm excited to uh, take down another win for people that don't know. We'll just do a quick recap of the last episode. So we had Miles Ladder on from the, on the previous episode for the Eastern Canadian Am Nationals. There's a lot of points there. All you need to look at is down the bottom. Team Shambles <laughs> taking down the, the victory there. Well, come on. Team j had the FPO winner, Sandy Hendel, on that team. Yeah, you did. Yeah. That's all you got to say? <laughs> that's, all I got for, that's all I've got for you on that one. So adding those points to the previous weeks, uh, the previous tournaments, Team Shambles with 56. Team Guest Invite with 44. But j Powell is closing the gap, but still bringing up the rear with 40 points. Yeah, that's right, Alex. You're going to have to uh, do some work here because I was quite a ways behind Team Guest Invite. And uh, I'm creeping up. I'm only four points back. That I could, I could catch up right away. Perfect. Well, I look forward to a good challenge this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look at the uh, tournament standing. So those were the points. If you look at the tournament standings team shambles has taken down four victories so far the guest has taken down one victory and, and a big old uh, goose egg next to uh jeremy's name daryl i think i think that uh, number that's showing there for mine is missing a belt could we just put a belt around the middle maybe cinch it up tight <laughs> and then things might look a little bit better on that number and are, you, are you trying to say that you're used to taking snowmen on your on your card is that what you're used to looking for i was gonna say it has been known to happen. I don't want to say I'm used to it, but it's it's not a surprise if it does happen. Yeah, exactly. I've had quite my I've had my fair share of eights as well. With a thousand ninety five foot par five in front of us on the weekend, it could be right there. Yeah, that was one of the things that surprised me. Looking at the uh, the scores from last year, I'm watching the coverage that Park Pro put out. I'm thinking, oh, I could probably make par, like a thousand and ninety five feet. That's just five two hundred foot throws, right? But then that wasn't until I realized that, oh, wait a minute, that means that's a 200-foot throw-in. So that doesn't work out. So maybe it's four 250-foot throws. But then I looked at the scorecard, and I think there was only one par on In one of the division. rounds. And people were taking 13s and 10s. And, yeah, it's not going to be a nice hole. Oh, it's it's definitely a challenge. Have uh, either of you played the course before? No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh, you, you gentlemen are in for a treat. Um, that hole you're talking about, 12 West, is getting narrower every year. The trees are really growing up around it, and that fairway gets tighter and tighter every time I see it. Oh, wow. We were, we, I mean, obviously, we don't have the power, but we were thinking, Jeremy mentioned that there's no Mando on the corner, right? But there's no way you'd be able to throw to make it over the corner into the fairway on the uh, the downside. Is there? Uh, there should be a man on the right side. 
Oh, is there? Oh, yeah. there is you got to hit that okay. corner before you start. Yeah, going you got to hit that away. corner before you go over the. You can't go over the trees on the right side, so you do have to play it dogleg oh. right as it's intended. Oh, okay. gotcha. Yeah, darn so it, just that add was my that play. To it, <laughs> <laughs> so eight might be a really good score on that hole for us. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, so let's quickly go over the rules. It's oh, yeah, going to be you a little bit. I have a point somewhere in the results. Do <laughs> oh, I not? Sorry. I, yeah. Okay, I'll give you that point. <laughs> Let's have a look at the fan vote. So the fan vote takes place if we are tied for tournament wins and uh, points. Jeremy has two wins. Ooh, Fans yeah, are baby. voting for you twice. Team Shambles has three wins. And the guest, nobody's yet to vote for the, or people have voted for the guest, but people just seem to vote for me and you more. I, I'm, you know. I think it's because that's where I know I'm going to get my points. So I really pump out the request. <laughs> I'm sending it to my grandma. Friends. I'm sending it to anyone I can get to vote for me. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So now let's go over the rules. So anyone who doesn't know, who hasn't watched our previous episode, it's going to be a little bit modified from what you're going to see on screen. But the way that it works is we're going to pick in this event, we're going to pick three MPOs. And because of the reduced FPO field, we're going to pick two FPO um, players. So if your MPO and your FPO win and your MPOs get on the podium and your other FPO gets on the podium as well, in an ideal world with three FPO picks, you would max out at 22 points. In this event with the uh, two FPO picks, you'll max out at 16. Uh, 19. 19. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Math is not our strong suit. Uh, I... I keep him along for some reason. <laughs> so yeah, I have you. Um, you've obviously um, played the course numerous times. You, you're part of the planning committee. Have you always been part of the planning committee? Have you, have you been involved in the setup for the event before? Uh, last year was my first year on the planning committee. So I started playing disc golf in 2021, and the 2022 edition of Falcon's Flight was my first, and um, it, it was a really impactful event for me i actually won ma3 that was my first wow. a-tier tournament win and it was very cool because a couple of months prior i got to play the course with rudy so okay. got to go play it with him and see the lines as he intended and um after that it was you know wanting to get involved and thankfully the uh, falcons flight committee asked if i wanted to be part of the committee last year and had a great experience and back again this year to make this event as memorable as we possibly can yeah, I'm sure it will be. Yeah. yeah. And I think all of that, too, is what also helps make you the great pick for this show. Even if Team j Pow can't take one down, maybe, well, we got, well, let's, let's just stop right there. What's your well, team name? The, team name. Yeah. No chain, no game. <laughs> <laughs> I love Perfect. it. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe Team No Chain No Gain can put Team Shambles in their place this week because you've got some insider knowledge. Could be. I mean, he's got insider knowledge on the course. Yes. And I'm sure, you know, if you were there last year, you would have seen the players that played it last year and, and seen Ben take down the win and seen him and Casey and all the the the, the favorites to win. You've seen them play the course before. but And also any, Gabby Anything can well. happen on any given yeah. day, Jeremy. It sure can, especially when 15 Chain Out podcast guests are playing in the tournament this weekend. <laughs> That's, That's right. It. Yeah, yeah, there you go. We're excited to uh, get down there and meet up with those people in, in, in person. That's awesome. Yeah. So before the we started recording, as always, as we've been kind of doing with our picks, we've decided that whoever came in um, third. third place... <laughs> Let's, let's put it that way. Whoever yeah. came in third place last week will be the one who gets to pick the order this week. And last week, that was Miles. He picked with his heart. We love him. And I'm sure the players did, but it just didn't pan out that way. So that allowed Alex to pick the order. And Alex, tell us tell us how we're picking tonight. All right. So tonight, we're going to start out with uh, Daryl starting out first. I'm going to lead Ooh. up the middle. And Jeremy is going to get the back-to-back -back on the snake draft. Nice. Alex, I knew there was a reason I liked you. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> My pleasure. So you're excited about this, Jeremy? You get to pick back-to-back, -back, third and fourth? I'm I'm excited. I, every time we record, I'm super excited. I have a list. It's written up nicely. I've got all of my comments. I pick the players that I'm excited about. It just hasn't come together. But this week, I, I got a feeling. There's a feeling in the air. Yeah. 
The okay. Falcons are going to fly for Team J Pal. Well, the way that it worked out last week, I was in the third, fourth position last week, and the MPO winner was my first pick, still available yeah. at pick three. So you've got a chance. I'll give you that. You've got a chance. You're telling me it's there's a, a chance. It's a Darryl. slim chance, but you've got a chance. <laughs> All right. So should we get things started? Let's roll. Let's do it. All right. So just uh this is part of the team shambles all right. experience yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right wait who okay was I pick? <laughs> yeah no i got it so team shambles with the first overall pick would like to welcome to the team from victoria british columbia <laughs> yes a member since 2021 currently 915 rated Plus two points in the last update. Recently, the last five events that she's been playing in never finished outside the podium. Tim Shambles would like to welcome friend of the show, Gabby Lee. <laughs> yes. It's a great good, pick, Daryl. Good choice, Daryl. Top of my list, Gabby, you're one of my favorites. One of the things I was hoping, now I don't want to say anything bad to 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 Gabby on this, but I was hoping if she was on my team, she would see bunnies everywhere on the course. There you go. It would That's just give her those vibes and she'd be playing well. Now I hope she still sees some, but I just hope it's uh, maybe not beaten down team J pow as badly as, <laughs> as it could. I will say I, I did notice that Gabby saw some bunnies out at the crush here in Calgary and she ended up coming back and taking home the win. So I think yeah. I'm cheering for the same thing, Jeremy. Yep. <laughs> Well, Alex, that puts team no chain, no, no gain, gain in the driver's seat now. All right. So for my first pick, the number two pick in our draft, I am going to take MPO player from Cranbrook, British Columbia, the 2022 Falcons flight champion, Casey Hannemeyer. Yes. That's yeah. a great pick. It is a great pick. You know, I was thinking about it too was when you watch the coverage from Park Pro last year, Casey had a bad first round, which should have put him down and out, you would think, or most mm -hmm. players, but not Casey. Like, he was coming back and had a solid third. There was nothing, like, you know, a couple points off that first round, and he would have been in it the whole way through. So, yeah, Chunk Disc is going to be out there chunking some discs and getting some mm -hmm. points for you. Oh, Another absolutely. friend of the show. Yep. <laughs> All right, you two. You did a great job in your first two picks because you've scratched off two names right off the top of my list. But Team j Pow is full of great picks because this tournament has great players in it. And for Team j Pow's first pick, third pick overall, hailing from Calgary, Alberta, 890 rated, took a 14-point jump at last ratings day because she's been on fire. As a lefty, she'll have some different looks at Falcons. Third place last year, Second at the Crush, first at Edmonton Open. Welcome to Team J Pow, Amber Chase on. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of going in the way that I thought it would go. Is it really? Yeah. Well, uh, the one thing it tells us is that there is going to be some changes as we get moving on. But I think if we're all of the same mindset, we've done our research well. Yeah, you gentlemen are uh, scratching some names off at the top of my list. So well done. Um, Amber's, right. Amber's a great pick. I've played a lot with Amber. She plays my local course, Forest Lawn, a oh, lot and crushes. Right. And crushes, yeah. And even, too, is Amber went out at the Limber Open, and uh, I believe she played MA2. That's correct. And yeah. she showed some of those players what what the what for there on the course as well. So I think she put the hot round up at Elliston Park, if I recall correctly, and I watched her bang home an eagle putt from 60 feet away. On one of the yeah. holes, so very well done. On that well huge done. downhill That's hole, right. if I That's remember right. right. Yeah, that was awesome. So, all right, well, I get another pick here, so let's not yep. delay. With my second pick, my the fourth pick overall, hailing from Vancouver, BC, 983 rated, second place at the event last year. He wants this one. He and Ben have battled multiple times, both with discs and as all-star wrestlers on the course. Oh. It's time, though, for Mr. Miguel Alvarado to come out on top. So welcome to the team, Miguel. Another friend of the show. 
Interesting. I love it when I leave you guys speechless because it's like, you're just like, oh man. Well, it was just after your previous comments about, you know, we're scratching off the same names off the same, you know, we're working down our sheets. Your very next pick, you've gone off script for me, Jeremy. Oh, there you go. That's where the, yeah. that's where it starts to get interesting. Yeah. Well, you, you scratched off another one for me, Jeremy. That's a great pick. Um, M- Miguel seems to be throwing the disc very well and playing in Vancouver and on the island, in, in and around the island. It, the mm-hmm. golf at Aspen plays very well to his game. Well, yeah. with that, and he's coming off some, like he's already Just on a roll win. winning the Jim Brown Cup that's there right. out in yeah. Vancouver. So, Good pick. Yeah, I'll give you that. He's All right. Definitely a great, great name. So um, back to number five is me, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So for my f- second pick, fifth overall, um, I'm going to take an FPO player based out of Calgary, Alberta as well. Um, mm. She recently has a set of fundraiser discs to fund her touring efforts next year. Uh, so mm-hmm. make sure you hit her up at Falcon's Flight to get one, one of those. Um, I'm going with Joe Henderson. Great pick. Yeah. Uh, I know this is going to sound like a broken record, Daryl, but another friend of the show. <laughs> exactly. First five picks, all friends of the show. That's right. Oh, sorry. Amber hasn't been on the show yet. All right. Well, keep an eye out, Amber. I'm sure sure we'll be working on getting you on the show. Yeah. Well, and the other thing with Joe is she won the Limber Open this year, right? That's what uh, I had on mine. I believe she did. And the yes. FPO, because I think there was just a couple and she yes, took her down. Joe, yes, yeah. Joe won the Limber Open. Yeah, and if you watch her IG post or Instagram post, like you said, is she's got her discs, but everything that she's been doing and throwing, she just looks dialed right now. I think she's yeah. she's going to make a name for herself. She's already made a name for herself. But yeah, at Falcons, she's going to just push it even further. Yeah, nope. Joe's one of those players. She has a very balanced forehand backhand game, mm-hmm. incredible putting. Um, you know, once again, another local to me, uh, playing Forest Lawn a lot. So shout out to the Forest Lawn crew for out there grinding and playing some disc golf. Um, it's going to be a great battle in the FPO field this weekend. Yeah. And not recently, but when we went down to Lethbridge, she was unable to play because she did have an injury. So she took some time off. She was getting some physio. She was getting herself looked after. So I think that's, you know, taking that self-care time and, and you know, working on her, her body sort of thing, getting herself nice and fit. She's definitely come back uh, stronger and, dare I say, better. Mm. Yeah, that's a fair yeah. fair comment for sure. Yeah. All right, so that brings it back to Team Shambles. So you've kind of uh, put a dampener on that side of my draft. So, okay, so <laughs> Team Shambles, second pick overall. Uh, and I'm stalling a little bit because I can't find his name on my uh, <laughs> oh, sheet. Oh, Alex, it's like Team Shambles no, is I got the it. exact correct name. It is, <laughs> oh, and, and he I'm, says every every time I say, Daryl, are you ready? He's like, yeah, I'm ready. I got it. I got it's it. It's a fitting name. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But I still seem to win every week, Jeremy. So, that's, what, I mean, that's the best what slash frustrating part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with Team Shambles' second pick, he would like to take... A 968 rated player, up eight mm. points in the recent uh, updates. Hailing from Canmore, Alberta, a member oh. since 2021. Second at Limber Open, third at the Edmonton Open, second at Big Bear Classic. And I think the Big Bear Classic um, and Edmonton Open, I think, while the elevation may not be there, I think the the wooded courses are going to play to his strengths here. Team Shambles would like to w- welcome Coda Posma. Yeah, great pick. And uh, Alex and I had a chance to see Coda play at Limber Open, and he was right in it right to the end and playing so well. And I exactly as you said, being from Canmore and playing so well at the Big Bear, he's got those tight wooded lines. Yeah, they're probably going to try. Do you think so, Alex? Do you think they'll translate to Falcons? Well, I think so. I I'd code a pretty high on my list as well. Um, you know, like you said, playing Canmore, playing the Nordic center, playing out at sea change brewing. Um, mm-hmm. though, those two courses in a lot of ways mimic Aspen. And yeah. I think being on the fairway and being accurate is such an advantage hmm. because yeah. if you get into those Aspens, it's very punitive. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, we've we've been told that a lot as well. So, hopefully, hopefully that'll be uh, a, you know, 
part of his strength so it would work good for team shambles so that's that was my second pick so now i get to pick again so this will yes. be pick seven overall my third pick i'm gonna go with oh i've clicked off the, <laughs> <laughs> I clicked off the wrong screen i got it i got it i got it so this player we've we've mentioned him before he's been a pick of jeremy's before he's from ankeny iowa Ooh, yes currently 1005 rated 87 career events with 13 wins he's played 12 events this season only twice as he finished outside the top 10 mm -hmm. team shambles would like to welcome nicholas culver to the team great choice that's that's another one. Well done, Daryl. Um, team Shambles is it might be team shaping up at this rate. <laughs> it's team all just ship a, shape. It's all just a, a character I play. I've got well, this dialed in. You're you're, you're playing it well. Um, once again, Nicholas, <laughs> great pick. Um, big shout out to him for taking down the Mexican Disc Golf Championships Absolutely. over Kevin Jones in Jones. a playoff. Um, yeah. You know, I think he's playing out of Vancouver now, so yeah. um, it's going to be a, a great weekend for him. I think it's his well, first Falcons flight too, so should be that's, interesting. Yeah, that's what I think as well. Yeah. So he was a bit of a. I mean, I don't want to say he was a wild card because obviously no, we know what he can do. We know how he's a great player, and we know what he can, he's capable of. What can he do on the uh, tight wooded courses? Like the uh, Mexican Open, there they had some trees, but it was nothing like um, anything that he's going to experience here. But like you say, playing out of Vancouver, I'm sure he's played in courses that are similar to this anyway. So. Well, you know, just as recently, Daryl, too, is, yeah, he won the Mexican Open at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Well, he just played in the South Sound Classic, which was in Olympia, Washington. It's an yeah. A-tier. And not only did he win it, he beat, you know, just Cole Rodolin, just kind of beat him to win it. So, Oh, yeah, I've heard that guy. Yeah, you might, have, you might have heard of that guy, maybe a young guy who's just really coming up and ready to start winning some DGPT events, Cole <laughs> Rodolin, you know? Yep. Yeah, so good pick. That throws it back to you, uh, uh, Alex. All righty. Um, so for my next pick, I am taking two-time Falcon Slate champ, uh, based out of Cranbrook as well, uh, the reigning defending champ of Falcon Slate, Ben Loggins. Uh, yes. His game plays so well. I remember watching Falcon Slate coverage for the first time in 2022 and watching Ben throw his pig all over the course and do some amazing things. And I expect him to have a great chance to repeat again this year. Yeah. That's a great I, pick. It is. Another, um, Daryl, I think uh, maybe another friend of the show. Maybe another friend of the show, yeah. Yeah. And Ben, too, uh, I've noticed he hasn't played a lot of sanctioned events, mm -hmm. but that can also be a good thing in some respects because you haven't overthrown your arm over the year. He's, you know, he, he's dialed in for this course. Yeah, he's on my list. You've scratched him off, Alex. Great pick. Thank you. And not only a, a proven winner, but a proven winner at this event. Yes. I mean, it says it all right there. Yep. All right. Well, I got a couple more picks coming up in front of me here. Mm -hmm. So with the first pick that I've got here, which would be my third pick for my team, I'm going with a player you guys are probably familiar with. He plays out of Lethbridge, Alberta. Right now is 1,000 on the dot rated. Fourth place last year in this tournament. He's been in the mix at almost every tournament this year that he's played. It's his time to shine at Falcons. And I think if you watched the recordings last night with or last year, with the way he putts, the baskets weren't always forgiving to his putts, and that's probably what caused him some trouble. Oh, guess what? Falcons has some new baskets. <laughs> Noah Higgins, welcome to the team. Time to kick some butt for Team J, pal. <laughs> That's a uh, that's a great point, Jeremy. Um, there are 36 new baskets at Aspen this mm. year, and they're ready to catch some putts. Yes, it's going to be awesome that way. And I think yeah. Noah's going to take advantage of it. Now, my next pick, and this will be my last MPO pick. I'm leading that out there. Yeah. And this is a player that Daryl and I got familiar with uh, just this year. He's a player out of Sherwood Park, Alberta. Oh. 995 rated picked up the win at the river city cup this year sixth place at falcons last year he's only played the one tournament this year but is ready to show you that you don't have to compete every weekend to win falcons 
we're welcoming Jay Sparrows to Team j Pow. <laughs> I like to pick Jeremy. Thank you. Yeah. He's... He wasn't my next pick or anywhere in the next couple, but he was definitely on my list. So I, I was I was expecting to him to to go pretty soon, depending on MPO FPO picks. But yeah, we we actually witnessed him do that final round at, uh, at uh, River City Cup, and you know we know he can win. He had it t- dialed in by or you know locked down by about hole fifteen, I think. 14. Oh yeah, he was just yeah, he was lacing them, placing the throws exactly where he wanted him putting his putts down yeah he's he's got a great chance at winning this one yeah okay, i think so that rolls over to me next so right back to you yeah all righty um so with my what is that fourth pick mm-hmm. uh, my second to last pick i am going to pick an fpo player um out of edmonton i am going to take Jeremy's jersey, Terry Heiserbaum Hong. <laughs> Great pick. Yeah. And the thing is, I have, of course, had Heiserbaum Hong on my list as well, Alex. You know, one of the things is whether Terry's playing well or whether Terry's just having a good round, the one thing she's bringing is she's always bringing energy, and that's yeah. always going to make a team a better team. So that's definitely she was on my list here. Oh yeah, the, the energy is unmatched and, you know, looking at both the FPO and MPO fields, I think anybody has a chance to win this weekend. Yeah. And, you know, if Terry puts it together for three rounds, it's going to be a great surge up the leaderboard and some great battles up there. Yeah. Terry's well, just coming it... off the win at um, um, the one down in Drumheller. At uh, the Lost, Lost Egg. Egg. Yeah. Yeah. So that caused that one, although you'll have some open spaces and stuff, you have to be precise because you could be yeah. in a lot of trouble if you're not. And then she also won the Night Owl tournament. And that one there is another set of tight wooded courses. So yeah. she's she's really been trying this year. She had said to me too that she's picking her tournament specific for Cold Garden Cup points and really trying to push and win some events. I'm telling you, Alex, that's a great pick. I, I appreciate- bomb Hong will do a lot of good things. I appreciate that. And, you know, mentioning that Drayton Valley course, um, if, if you get a chance, if anyone has a chance on listening to this to get out to Top Gun, it's a great challenge and it's going to make your game better. So give it a chance. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, Daryl, you got a couple picks left, hey? Maybe even more than that? Yeah, you got three mm, picks. No, I, two picks. Two left. left. Yeah. Two, two left, yeah. So, um, I think who, okay. So I am also going to go with uh, an FPO pick also out of Edmonton, Alberta, Mm -hmm. currently rated 850 up one point, 31 career events, six career wins. She's been a member since 2021, never finished outside the top six in all the events that she's played this year. Just coming back from the crush in Calgary where she took down a podium third place. Let's welcome friend of the show, Kristen Swirls. <laughs> yes. Yes. Good choice. Daryl, that will put you with both of your FPO picks then. That is correct. So you've got one MPO pick left. One MPO pick left, exactly. Uh, Okay. So with my final pick in the MPO division and final pick overall, I'm going to pick a player that we've mentioned a few times on the Fantasy Podcast, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Out of Victoria, BC. Currently 976 rated. 29 career events, 6 wins. Hasn't played that many tournaments this year, but he did take second at the Larger Than Life tournament Mm. up in the Yukon. Let's welcome Luke Levesque. Ah, good choice. Yep. I'm not sure if either of you follow Luke on Instagram, but his forehand's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky Luke, right? Lucky Luke, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Yeah, no, we've... uh... 
we've watched that. We've seen some of his play. I think he had a really good chance to take down larger than life. At least when we were communicating with him, he felt a little bit like that's one of the things he's got some fire in him right now because mm-hmm. he had it. He had yeah. larger than life. Eden Badajoz came back and took advantage of the opportunity. And then uh, Luke wants, he wants some retribution, not necessarily against Eden, but just to show that he's got what it takes. And this would be the tournament where you win Falcons. Yeah, people are going to know. <laughs> people are going to know real quick. Absolutely. I, I think Luke's going to be uh, another great player to watch. So, Daryl, I hate to say it, but five great picks <laughs> coming out of you tonight. Thank you. It may, not look, it may look like uh, it's like a duck. You know, so hectic underneath, but it's calm and collected on top. Maybe it's the other way around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. An upside down duck. <laughs> yeah. All righty. I guess I got my last pick. Um, you, yeah. Some tough choices. Um, I am going to go a little off the beaten path, and okay, I'm like going that. to pick the 2023 runner up in MA1 at Falcons flight, Jackson oh. Peace. Um, so oh. Jackson is a young lefty out of Calgary. He is an incredible player. Um, he throws so far. So anyone thinking of entering the long drive competition on set Friday and Saturday, watch out. Jackson is going to try and take your money. Okay. Yeah. We watched him throw long drive down at uh, Lethbridge um, when he was down there. And we seen that he was uh, an, uh, bombing his, uh, drives down there i can't remember exactly where he placed in that event but i know that we uh, seen him on the tee and uh yeah you're right that's a great pick yeah, yeah and Jen- he had keep going oh go ahead jeremy yeah i was gonna say he also had a great performance down at worlds because he was down there this year and on top of that we had kai Sotnikau on the show yes and all he had to say was you know almost it was like with his biting his lip as he was saying it but you know jackson is one of the guys he plays with helps him with his game and he he likes to trash talk but he only trash talks because the player is that good that he deserves it so yeah he had a lot to say about uh, jackson that's right yeah jackson and i have some good competitive rounds and you know usually he ends up coming out on top but uh jackson's another you know five-star volunteer here in calgary him and his dad run the glow league at out of baker and drm and you know put a lot of time and effort in and do so much for falcons flight in the community as a whole so big shout out to jackson yeah and it, am i right to alex that that glow league that they run it's year round oh year it... year round they're out there playing every week it doesn't matter if it's minus 40 or 30 degrees celsius they're out there playing wow awesome yeah all right well that's uh going to put me to my last pick Mm -hmm. and I need to fill out my FPO side of the board and I'm going to choose a player who's 866 rated out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, making the trek across over to Alberta. In my notes here, they just won the 19th annual Saskatchewan Open Provincial Disc Golf Championships. That's a mouthful, but they took it down a nice B tier with a hefty 167 bucks in their pocket they're going to look to come to falcon's flight find some way to spend that money and the winnings they get there we're going to welcome bailey inglis to team j pal that's an awesome pick jeremy and may i mention a second place finish at big bear as well Mm -hmm. as well as a first place finish at the escape sports open in saskatoon um i had bailey pretty high up on my list too so i think that's an awesome pick Good job. Yeah. And that was the thing as we were talking about guys is that when you looked at the list, we've got so many great Canadian players and there's a number that we didn't pick, but it wasn't like it was hard. Like we could have inserted a number of other people into this um, roster because it's just that deep of a field. I I think out of all 54 MPO and all seven FPO playing this weekend, I had a little write up for each and every one of them because (laughs) there's too many good picks out there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, well, that's the thing awesome. that when we when we you know kind of do our research or whatever we think about okay well I need to pick three MPO Jeremy needs to pick three MPO you need to pick three MPO so that's nine possible if we all picked separately but out of those nine like you said we could if we looked at our list or combined our list I'm sure there's players that you have that I don't have and I have players that Alex doesn't have like that list like you said you can pick any of those players that can any and you know, they're all going to do great. Unfortunately, there's a top 10, yeah. which is what we're, we're looking at here. But 
at any given time, you know, any one of those players can be in that top 10 or even winning it or, you know. And the nice thing about that too, Daryl, is that with our listeners, we're going to want them to vote on whose team that they like the best, but we also want them to pick their own team and yeah. they may pick some players we don't have. So someone on my list that just didn't get picked, but was up there is Carver Whitford out of yeah. Kelowna. Mm -hmm. Carver's a young gun coming up and putts like a phenom, throws like a phenom, like he, like he's got so much game and we could all be looking up at him from our teams in, he could be the one who wins it, right? And yeah. Carver won MA1 last year at Falcon, so he knows the courses. He's been here before. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a list, you know, looking at, you know, some of the other folks I had on my list, Josh Smith. Yes. Um, he's, you know, he went in one Big Bear. He won yes. out in Drayton Valley, so he's no stranger to playing in a wooded course. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's the tough decision. I looked at Joss. I looked at, at Carver. I looked at quite, like you said, we looked at pretty much all the players on the list. Well, I mean, I did look at every, every player on the list, but you know, it's making that tough decision of, okay, who do I think can do it on, on that given weekend? Right. Yeah. It's so tough. Well, Darryl, but if it was easy, we wouldn't do it. That's right. And the thing is, as we've said is hopefully this gets people learning more about the pros watch PGA live on the weekend check i know you're going to watch to see where daryl and jeremy are right they, obviously you're going to be <laughs> yeah. checking out the ma40 division but when you're done doing that you can check out the fpo and mpo and learn some more players and maybe some people that you weren't as familiar with yeah and that's that's the main goal of you know everything we do with the chain out podcast but especially with the fantasy league we want to get people you know learning the canadian pros excuse me learning the canadian pros names um, and hopefully they'll become household names sooner than, sooner than you know it. Yeah. All right. So what we should do is we should just give a rundown on our teams so that everybody can, uh, will know which team to vote for team shambles. Um, <laughs> so I went first, so I will, uh, lead, uh, read off my uh, team first. So I took the first overall pick with Gabby Lee. Then I have Coda Posma, Nicholas Culver, Kristen Swirls, and Luke Levesque. All right. And I was up second. So I took Casey Hannemeyer, Joe Henderson, Ben Loggins, Terry Hong, and Jackson Peace. Nice. And then Team J Pow up third took Amber Chason, Miguel Alvarado, Noah Higgins. I'm just loving my team. Noah Higgins, Jay Sparrows. <laughs> And Bailey Inglis. Yeah, great teams. Three great teams, yeah. Absolutely. Right. Well, we'd be remiss, Alex, of having the nicest guy in disc golf on the show with us here. And two guys never playing Falcons before. Do you got anything that's going to help these poor guys stay on the course? <laughs> Gentlemen, honestly, I think the biggest thing is just go have fun, enjoy the courses, enjoy the experience, and the game will kind of come together as it's meant to be. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the work that Rudy and the tournament committee has put into making Aspen Meadows and Falcons Flight the event it is, um, that that's what really makes this weekend special. Um, you know, enjoy the play, stay in bounds, stay out of the Aspens. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that's easier said than done. It, 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 it is, but if, if you can do that, you're going to have a great weekend. Uh, yeah. thanks Alex. And I think we'll have a great weekend cause we're going to find you. We'll have a beverage. We can compare how our players are doing, maybe chat with them and pump them up a little bit while we're there too. <laughs> remind them that we've got, we're rooting for them. Hopefully that spurs them on and doesn't, uh, harm their performance. So I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, maybe just a little special mention. If anybody is in the sundry area this weekend, uh, please come out, support the players, come watch. Um, we also have the long drive in the putting competition on the Friday is the qualifier Saturday is the finals. And then, you know, other than that, if you're looking to volunteer, you can get some sweet Aspen Meadows merch exclusively for volunteers. So if you feel like signing up, even do one shift spotting, run some water to some other volunteers, uh, we always appreciate it. Yeah. And that's great. And that's yeah. the thing is, is the players are there. 
but it's the volunteers and all the TD staff and that, that really make this event come together. So I want to say ahead of time, thanks to everyone who is volunteering and, and helping put this event together. Yeah. Especially all those players that are playing and volunteering. I know some of the picks even tonight, I know Miguel I saw was on the list. I think Casey and Ben were on the list to do a little volunteering when they weren't playing. So um, it's a disc golf community coming together and making the event what it is. So thank yes, Thank you all. Awesome. Well, we thank you for being on the uh, show, Alex. Is there, we want to give you a little bit of time here. Is there anything that you would like to shout out personally for yourself? Uh, no, I, I think I'm good. You know, I, I appreciate, <laughs> um, appreciate everything that you gentlemen are doing. You guys are making the disc golf community better and, you know, creating some awareness around the great Canadian pros we have here. And I'm looking forward to putting some of my own picks in for some of the other eight years coming up for the rest of the year. Perfect. Great. Awesome. Thank you, well, Alex. We can't wait to see you uh, this weekend. Tune in next Wednesday for our live episode where we will give you the update on who took down the win, who took down the, the most points, and we'll also recap the fan vote as well. And with those recaps, we're always trying to get the MPO and FPO winners on, so we'll try to do that for you. We've already secured Jordan Alway. He's going to come join us. And Don Annette might also join us too, awesome. so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Jeremy, you happy with your team? I'm you... ecstatic with my team. Team Shambles, I love your players, but your team's going down. <laughs> I, I think Jeremy doesn't mind if you win, Alex. He just wants to beat me. That, yep. That's it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's fair, really. I think everybody's cheering again, cheering against Daryl this weekend, <laughs> but we're cheering for your uh, team picks, for sure. Yeah, yeah we want absolutely. your players to play well. We just don't want your team to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Jeremy. We will catch you on the next one. Thank you, gentlemen. You bet.